and welcome to Ed's Boat and it is a freezing cold morning, minus five last night and minus three this morning I think when I set out and the canal is totally frozen over. I don't think I've seen it frozen over totally this year so uh, that's just an indication of uh, the time of year isn't it, winter time. Uh, a big thank you to all the new subscribers, I think we're over 600 now so thank you very much you are most welcome but the Christmas period is over, everybody's back at work but I haven't stopped work. What I've been doing is coming in, when I get a moment, working on the boat, including New Year's Day. So, this is what happened on New Year's Day. It's New Year's Day, and uh, so Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, and when most people are sitting at home, nursing a hangover, uh, I'm not, I'm on the boat working. Uh, now, it's a horrible day. It has been raining since the early hours of the morning, with no sign of it letting up. Uh, for hours and hours and hours so uh, most people just sit inside and huddle up but it's a brilliant opportunity to check for leaks. Uh, when I first had the boat I sat inside on a rainy day and I checked for leaks and I marked them all up with a felt tip pen and went along and addressed them and I had a few leaks around the windows and through the skylights uh, which I've done and we've checked that over and that is fine but I have found one more leak so let's go and have a quick look at that. So we're going down to the back of the boat here uh, and you can see it's still raining on the water there, a horrible, horrible day. Well, what's been happening, if I step outside, is the rain has been coming down. It has been running down the inside of the slider rail there and then running down. At round about this sort of point here, going inside the boat, and getting a wet patch just there. So we put a bucket down there, well a container down there to catch the drips. We'll wait for the rain to stop and then we'll go back and address this situation. I think we can cure this with a little bit of silicon sealer actually, just a blob on the end of the uh, where the runner is before the door hatch and that should make the water go off the side maybe and well we'll see but if not we'll come up with a better solution but I think we can cure that quite easily and we'll do both sides as well because this side is showing is not dripping but it is showing signs of water running down the inside there so we'll do that okay it is a nice day well at least it's not raining anyway and I took the time to uh, go out onto the roof and we'll have a look at that leak now the water was running down the, outs, uh, the inside edge on both sides all the way down here and making its way inside and dripping inside the boat. So what I've opted to do, if I can just move this forward, is I've just drilled a hole there and I've done one the other side as well. So when the water runs all the way down there it gets to that hole and drips through onto the roof and then runs away nicely. Now what I'm going to do, I might have to make that hole a bit bigger, maybe a slot to cope with torrential rain um, and I might put another one behind it when I remove the wood so this is like a an extra safety measure and then we'll paint all that in and stop it rusting and that sort of thing uh, but I think that's going to cure it so uh, fingers crossed that's a good result. Right we've entered another stage in the boat restoration and that is putting the roof on which is more woodwork and I don't like woodwork I prefer metal all day every day anyway I've been quite looking forward to this job but dreading it as well but I went out bit the bullet bought some wood so here we are I bought 16 mil that's the thickness tongue and groove wood cladding this is and we're going to use that to line the roof with they are 3.6 meter lengths all the way down there and if I turn around on the boat 3.6 meters will take us from the end where we put that cut the plywood for the bulkhead all the way down to there where I've marked it on the insulation so that's quite a way and that's just over a third of the length of the boat uh, so we're going to start putting that up uh, but I didn't want to put it straight up against the insulation because boats are made of steel condensation is a problem even with insulation and all this sort of thing you cannot eliminate the condensation so uh, you have to manage it so what I've done is I didn't want to put the wood straight up against the insula uh, insulation uh, and risk the condensation staining the wood making it go rotten swelling it up whatever I needed to treat the wood with something now somebody said just varnish it I thought that maybe fence treatment 
Um, but now I came across this stuff. This is Cupronol wood preserver. Uh, other wood preservers are available. Uh, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try that. And you paint it on just with a brush all the way down the length and it goes on really watery and soaks into the wood, which is a good thing. So that means that I can do the intricate bits for the tongue and grooving and all this sort of thing. Uh, and it soaks in really quickly and it does say for outdoor use two to three coats, but because it's indoors, it's not going to be open to the weather as such. I gave it one really thick coat and it dries, I don't know, about an hour. This is dried up and it does sort of stain the wood a slightly darker colour and make it a tiny bit shiny. So you can see the difference between one that's been done and one that hasn't, so we shouldn't get confused. Uh, but also you can paint straight over it as well, which is useful. Anyway, so uh, that's what we've done. So the next thing to do is put one of these up in the air and uh, start fixing it. Right, we have cut our first piece of wood to go into line the roof, so there it is, all the way along, all cut to length. Now, what I've done is I've made these stands just out of uh, a bit of scrap wood from uh, when I made the bulkheads, that was off cut. Screwed it to a pole, so it makes a stable foot to stand up in so I can get it started. Wedge that against the uh, piece of wood that's gonna be the roof and done the same on the other side so that will stay up on its own now i'm working on this boat on my own so i need a hand and there's not always a hand available so i've made something to assist me in this role so we've wedged that up nice and tight now what we're going to do is double check all our measurements and make sure that we're in the middle so if i go down the back we'll just see whether my marking is correct so i have put a felt tip pen mark there against the pencil mark, which doesn't show up on this camera very well. Uh, and that's in line, and I've done the same in the side, but we'll double check that. Then we're gonna drill a pilot hole and put the first screws in and uh, start fixing it in. Now, it might not look like it's in the middle to you, but we don't count that bit. So it would all look a bit sort of that way, if you know what I mean. So uh, yeah, we'll start that. We'll put the first bit in and then we'll check our measurements and we'll see how well we've done because this first one is really important. Because it's going to be symmetrical, it's got to be symmetrical because of you know, that's just the way I like things. And we've done all the measurements for the centering and all this sort of thing. And then we will work out that way and the same that way. So when I put the lights in there, evenly spaced and everything's going to look right. If I lie down in the living room area and look up and see that the lights aren't quite in line, that will bother me. So uh, I'm going to make sure I get this right now. So. Uh, we'll double check our measurements and we'll screw the first lot of holes and then um, we'll see how we got on. Right, we have put our first piece in and there it is. So if I go down to this end and we'll move the camera around, we'll have a quick look at how we did. So if I look down the boat there, it's pretty straight, isn't it? It's pretty in line. It's not a bad bit of wood that worked out quite well. Now, what you will notice here is I've got a bit of a gap there but it's not secured at this bit here. What I'm going to do is put some wood across that um, to finish off the uh, hatch and that will secure all that and straighten all that up. So I'm not too worried about that, but the rest of it is all in there. Uh, and it's just been held in with a single screw along the center. Now, before anybody writes in or comments and says, well, hang on a minute, you'll be able to see that screw head. Um, I'm going to paint this roof and uh, I will skim over that with a bit of wood filler, sand it all back and then paint it and then you won't see that, so it'll be nice. So the next thing to do is to just do more of that and there's lots of it to do. This is only just over a third of the length of the boat uh, so we've got quite a bit more to do but more importantly uh, we've got to try and get the lighting in as well. So uh, I'll probably revisit this bit of uh, the boat restoration once we get to fitting the lights. So uh, just got to get my head down really and just get on with it. Okay, that's it for another episode and thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, just leave them in comments and I'll try and answer them for you at a later date. And if there's anything you'd like me to feature in a bit more detail, leave that in comments as well and I'll try and sort that out for you. Right, in the next episode, we're going to have a quick work catch up and inform you exactly where I am with work on the boat. But until then, take care and I'll see you soon.